One minute ago, Sakurajima sent a column of ash 4,400 meters into the sky, higher than any eruption in over a year. The blast came at 12.57 a.m. when most of Kagoshima was asleep. But what scientists are watching isn't just this eruption, it's what's building beneath it. Because deep below the crater, magma is accumulating faster than it's being released. And the caldera that produced one of Earth's most catastrophic eruptions 30,000 years ago is recharging. On November 16, 2025, at 12.57 a.m. local time, Sakurajima Volcano on Japan's southern island of Kyushu erupted explosively from its Minamidake crater, sending volcanic ash to heights not seen since October 2024. The Japan Meteorological Agency, JMA, confirmed the eruption produced an ash plume reaching 4,400 meters above the crater rim, the equivalent of 14 or 135 feet. This marked the first time since October 18, 2024, that an eruption from Sakurajima exceeded 4,000 meters. Two more eruptions followed in quick succession, one at 2.30 a.m. and another at 8.50 a.m. the same day. Volcanic rocks were ejected as far as the fifth station observation point on the volcano's flank. No pyroclastic flows were detected, but the violence of the blast was unmistakable. Within hours, Kagoshima Airport reported disruptions. 30 flights were canceled due to ashfall and reduced visibility. Volcanic ash drifted northeast, blanketing three prefectures, Kagoshima, Kumamoto, and Miyazaki. Residents were advised to wear masks and drive cautiously through ash-laden streets. Yet remarkably, no injuries were reported. No evacuations were ordered. And the volcano's alert level remained unchanged at level three. Do not approach the volcano. For most volcanoes, an eruption of this magnitude would trigger immediate alarm. But Sakurajima is not most volcanoes. It is one of the most active stratovolcanoes on Earth, erupting hundreds of times per year. Since 1955, it has recorded over 7,300 explosive eruptions. In 2018 alone, there were 479 eruptions. By 2025, the volcano had already erupted 85 times through March. To the people of Kagoshima, who live just four kilometers across the bay from the crater, eruptions are a fact of life. But this eruption was different, not because of its size, but because of its timing. Because while Sakurajima erupts frequently on the surface, something far more ominous is happening below. And the 4,400 meter ash plume may be a symptom of a system that is slowly, steadily building towards something much larger. Approximately 4,500 residents continue to live on the Sakurajima Peninsula itself, their homes shadowed by the smoking crater. Across the bay, Kagoshima City, population 583966, goes about its daily life under the constant gaze of the volcano. Schools conduct evacuation drills. Concrete shelters dot the landscape. Emergency ferries stand ready. This is a city that has learned to coexist with one of the planet's most restless volcanoes. But that's only part of the story. Sakurajima is not a standalone volcano. It is the active southern rim of the Ira Caldera, a massive volcanic depression measuring 17 by 23 kilometers that sits beneath Kagoshima Bay. The Ara Caldera was formed approximately 22,000 to 30,000 years ago during one of the largest volcanic eruptions of the late Pleistocene epoch. The eruption, known as the Ara Tanzawa event, ejected an estimated 400 cubic kilometers of magma in a catastrophic explosion classified as VEI-7 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, the second highest rating possible. The ash from that eruption, called the AT Tephra layer, can be found across Japan and is used by geologists as a time marker in sediment cores. The collapse that followed created the caldera that now forms the northern half of Kagoshima Bay. Sakurajima emerged from the southern rim of this caldera sometime after the collapse, growing through repeated eruptions over millennia. Today it stands 1,117 meters tall, a constantly active vent releasing pressure from the magma chamber below but the system beneath it is far larger than the volcano itself, and it is still very much alive. In 2016, a team of scientists from the University of Bristol, working in collaboration with Kyoto University's Sakurajima Volcano Research Center, published a study that sent a quiet shockwave through the volcanology community. Using GPS monitoring data, 
ground deformation measurements, and analysis of eruption rates, they calculated that magma is being supplied to the Ara Caldera system at a rate of approximately 14 million cubic meters per year. That's roughly 3.5 times the volume of London's Wembley Stadium every single year. The problem, that magma is accumulating faster than Sakurajima is erupting it. Since the massive 1914 Taisho eruption, the largest volcanic event in Japan in the 20th century, the magma chamber has been steadily refilling. Ground uplift measurements show continuous expansion of the subsurface reservoir. The caldera has nearly recharged to pre-1914 levels. Based on the current accumulation rate, the researchers concluded that enough magma for another eruption on the scale of 1914 could accumulate in approximately 130 years from the date of the study. What this means is that while Sakurajima's frequent small eruptions release pressure, they are not keeping pace with the magma supply. The system is inflating. Continuous GNSS observations show gradual ground expansion along baselines crossing the Ara caldera. Sulfur dioxide emissions remain very high, 3,100 tons per day as of November 2024, indicating active magma degassing at depth. Nightly crater incandescence visible on webcams confirms that molten rock sits close to the surface. Sakurajima is monitored more intensively than almost any volcano on Earth. 18 seismograph stations track every tremor. 24 GPS stations measure ground deformation continuously. Inclinometers and extensometers are installed in 200-meter observation tunnels drilled into the volcano's flank. Gas sensors measure sulfur dioxide emissions in real time. Webcams provide 24-hour visual monitoring. The Sakurajima Volcano Research Center, operated by Kyoto University, sits just 5.6 kilometers from the active crater housing scientists who have dedicated their careers to understanding this volcano. And what they are seeing is a system that is not calming down. It is reloading. Yet what comes next could be even worse. On January 12, 1914, Sakurajima produced the most violent eruption Japan had seen in modern history. An event that permanently altered the geography of southern Kyushu and killed dozens of people. The 1914 Taisho eruption began with a series of strong earthquakes. For days, the ground shook. Residents felt the tremors intensifying. And then, on the morning of January the 12th, the volcano exploded. Lava fountains shot into the sky. Massive lava flows poured down both the eastern and western flanks of the volcano, advancing toward the sea. Over the course of the eruption, approximately 10 billion tons of lava 1.5 cubic kilometers, was ejected. The flows were so voluminous that they filled the narrow strait separating Sakurajima Island from the Osumi Peninsula and permanently connecting the island to mainland Kyushu. The eruption was classified as VEI-4. 58 people died, most from the initial earthquakes and the eruption itself, but the death toll could have been far higher. Strong precursory earthquakes had prompted most residents to evacuate before the main eruption began. Those who stayed, either because they refused to leave their homes or because they underestimated the danger, paid with their lives. Eight hours after the main eruption, a magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck, causing extensive damage across Kagoshima City. Buildings collapsed. Fires broke out. The combined impact of the eruption and the earthquake devastated the region. Economic damage was estimated at $40,000 in 1914 currency, a staggering sum for the time. But the most lasting legacy of the 1914 eruption wasn't the death toll or the property damage. It was the transformation of Sakurajima from an island into a peninsula. The lava flows didn't just change the map, they changed the way people thought about the volcano. It was no longer an isolated island volcano. It was now physically connected to the mainland, and the risk it posed was no longer theoretical. The 1914 eruption serves as the benchmark for what Sakurajima is capable of. It was the last time the volcano produced a sustained, large-volume lava flow. And it is the event that scientists use when modeling future eruption scenarios. The University of Bristol study calculated that the magma chamber has nearly recharged to pre-1914 levels. 
That means the system has accumulated roughly the same amount of magma that was ejected in 1914, 1.5 cubic kilometers. What would a repeat of 1914 look like today? Kagoshima City now has a population of nearly 600,000 people. The city sits just four kilometers across the bay from the volcano. Modern infrastructure, roads, bridges, power lines, airports, would be devastated by a large eruption. Lava flows could again advance toward populated areas. Ashfall could blanket the city, collapsing roofs and shutting down transportation. And unlike 1914, when much of the population lived in rural areas and could evacuate on foot or by boat, today's urban density means evacuating hundreds of thousands of people in a short time frame would be a logistical nightmare. Japan has learned from 1914. Every January 12th, Kagoshima conducts evacuation drills, a tradition that has continued for over 50 years. Concrete shelters are scattered across Sakurajima to protect residents from falling rocks and ash. Emergency ferries stand ready. Students wear protective helmets and carry masks and goggles. The J-Alert system can send multilingual warnings directly to mobile phones. The peninsula is divided into zones, each with specific evacuation protocols. But all the preparation in the world can't change one fundamental fact. The magma is still building, and now scientists fear history may be repeating itself. As of November 18, 2025, Sakurajima remains at alert level 3, with access prohibited within 2 kilometers of both the Minamidake and Showa craters. But the eruption on November 16 wasn't an anomaly. It was part of an accelerating pattern. Sakurajima recorded 145 eruptions in 2024. By March 2025, it had already erupted 85 times. The November 16th eruption, with its 4,400-meter ash plume, was the most significant since October 2024. And while the JMA has not raised the alert level, the data tells a story of a volcano that is not quieting down. The Japan Meteorological Agency's official forecast issued on November 11, 2024, states plainly, eruptive activity is expected to continue at Sakurajima. Large volcanic rocks and small pyroclastic flows may scatter more than one kilometer from the craters. Blocks have been ejected 800 to 1,000 meters from the vent during recent explosive events. Ashfall remains possible on downwind areas depending on weather conditions, and the hazard isn't limited to ash. Volcanic gases, particularly sulfur dioxide, pose a health risk to anyone approaching the summit. But the most concerning data comes not from the surface, but from below. Continuous GNSS observations show gradual ground expansion along baselines crossing the Aira caldera. This indicates deep underground magma accumulation. The magma chamber beneath Kagoshima Bay is inflating, and the inflation is ongoing. Japan's five-level volcanic alert system provides a framework for understanding the threat. Level 3, where Sakurajima currently sits, means do not approach the volcano. It restricts access to non-residential areas near the crater, but does not require evacuations. Level 4, prepare to evacuate, would indicate that residential areas are threatened and elderly and vulnerable populations should evacuate. Level 5, evacuate means mandatory evacuation from all threatened residential areas. Sakurajima reached level 5 once before, on July 24, 2022. That eruption scattered volcanic rocks up to 2.5 kilometers from the crater and prompted evacuation advisories for approximately 120 residents in two towns. It was the first time Sakurajima had ever been assigned level 5. And while the eruption subsided and the alert level was lowered, the event served as a stark reminder. This volcano is capable of sudden, violent escalations. The challenge with Sakurajima is that it erupts so frequently that each individual eruption can seem routine. But frequency doesn't mean safety. It means unpredictability. Because among the hundreds of small eruptions, there will eventually be a large one. And when that large one comes, the warning time may be measured in hours, not days. The 2016 University of Bristol study concluded that the volcano presents a growing potential for a larger eruption. While no specific timeline can be predicted, the magma accumulation rate suggests that the system is building towards something. The question isn't if Sakurajima will produce another major eruption, it's when. Kagoshima's disaster preparedness culture is extraordinary. 
The city has lived with this volcano for over a century since the 1914 eruption, and only two people have died from eruptions since then, one in 1946 and one in 1955. That track record is a testament to the effectiveness of monitoring education and emergency response. But it's also a reminder that complacency is deadly. The moment people stop taking the volcano seriously is the moment the volcano will prove why it demands respect. And the November 16th eruption, with its towering ash plume and canceled flights, was a reminder that Sakurajima is still very much awake, because what happens next could rewrite maps. The eruption has ended. The ash has settled. Flights have resumed. But beneath Kagoshima Bay, the era caldera continues to inflate, and the system remains fundamentally unstable. The Ira Caldera has a history that extends far beyond Sakurajima's modern activity. The Ira Tanzawa eruption, 22,000 to 30,000 years ago, was a VEI-7 event, one of the largest volcanic eruptions of the late Pleistocene. It ejected 400 cubic kilometers of magma, created a caldera 17 by 23 kilometers wide, and deposited ash across Japan that remains visible in geological records today. That eruption was roughly 250 times larger than the 1914 Taisho eruption. It was a cataclysm on a scale that modern Japan has never experienced. And while such eruptions are rare, occurring on timescales of tens of thousands of years, the system that produced it still exists. The Era Caldera is not extinct. It is active and it is recharging. Scientists are careful not to predict imminent catastrophe. The JMA continues 24-hour monitoring via seismic, GPS tilt, gas, and visual observation systems. No prediction of a larger eruption has been issued. The current activity is consistent with Sakurajima's typical behavior pattern since 1955, but consistency doesn't mean stability. It means the system is in a quasi-equilibrium, releasing pressure through frequent small eruptions while slowly accumulating magma at depth. The 2016 Bristol study was careful in its language. It did not predict a timeline. It did not claim an eruption was imminent. It simply stated the facts. Magma is accumulating faster than it is being erupted, and the system is building toward another large event. Whether that event occurs in 50 years, 100 years, or 500 years is unknowable. But the trend is clear. The uncertainty is what makes Sakurajima so difficult to live with. It erupts constantly, but rarely dangerously. It's monitored intensively, but remains unpredictable. And while the people of Kagoshima have adapted to life with an active volcano, adaptation doesn't eliminate risk, it manages it. The term megavolcano, used in sensationalized headlines, refers to the era caldera's VEI-7 history. But no scientist is suggesting that a caldera-forming eruption is imminent. What they are suggesting is that the system is capable of producing large damaging eruptions on the scale of 1914, and that the magma supply rate indicates such an event is becoming more likely as time passes. Sakurajima is a reminder that the Earth is not stable. Beneath the surface, magma moves, pressure builds, and systems that appear calm can erupt with little warning. The November 16th eruption sent ash 4,400 meters into the sky. It canceled flights. It reminded the world that this volcano is still here, still active and still dangerous. But the real question isn't what Sakurajima did on November 16th, it's what it will do next. The monitoring continues, the drills continue, the shelters stand ready, and deep below Kagoshima Bay, in the darkness of the magma chamber, the pressure slowly, inexorably rises. Stay vigilant. Stay informed and never forget what lies beneath.